The Trial of Time Lord series continues with Mind Warp. This was the second serial of the 23rd season that encompassed episodes 5 to 8 of the Trial of a Time Lord arc, and they aired in four parts from the 4th to the 25th of October 1986. The Doctor, played once again by Colin Baker, is still in the middle of his trial, overseen by the Inquisitor, played by Linda Belliam, and the Valyard, played by Michael Jaston. Once again, I'm not going to reveal much about the Valyard because it hasn't happened yet in the story. I'll let you know when I get there. But for this part of the trial, once again, they look into the Doctor's interference with the affairs of the planet Thoros Beta. Now, while there, the while looking into this, we see that the Doctor. Colin Baker, and his companion Perry Brown arrived on Thoros Beta, a planet with a rather beautiful sea that's bright pink. I'm not sure how they managed to do these kind of visual effects, but I will admit it is rather... the planet's rather beautiful to look at, at least on the surface at least. And before I go much further into the story, I will admit once again, the visual effects of the 1980s were still pretty darn good. I mean... They once again do a push-in shot to the space station where the trial is being held, and once again, it's rather impressive for the time period. I mean, 1986, this is still some pretty impressive stuff. But, anyway, when they watch through on the Matrix, uh, on the planet Thoros Beta, where the Doctor and Perry have arrived, they encounter Sill, a, an alien arms dealer who they had previously encountered in the story Vengeance on Varos, played by... Nabil Shaban. Vengeance on Varos is one of the six Doctor stories I haven't yet seen. M maybe I will at some point, but at the moment I still have yet to see that particular story. And if you imagine with him a cross between a slug, a mollusk, and a baby, you have pretty much got it. Kind of a green creature kind of sitting back in his chair, feeling like he's all powerful. Now, while he why he's there is that there's another ver another member of this race who I think is a higher official or something named Kiv, played by Christopher Ryan. And Kiv's problem is that he has a condition where his brain is beginning to swell. And unlike it is here on Earth, the problem is his brain is growing and basically his skull is going to crush it. So they need to transfer his consciousness from his body into a suitable replacement, another body. And they end up going through a couple of people, and throughout the story, it seems after they try and do some mind stuff to the Doctor, he seemingly ends up on their side, which I do actually think is a rather good twist to the story, because you're never quite sure which side the Doctor's on. Uh, he'll appear to be working for the bad guys, and then, when at one point he has Paddy captured, and then says to her, No, don't worry, I'm just trying to make sure you're safe. She's like, Oh, okay, well, he's not actually that bad. And then suddenly he's trying to choke her on the beach, and she's like, Oh, well, which side is he truly on? It keeps you guessing the story, which I, which I do like. But while I, there is. Oh, how best to say this? Well, they're assisted by a doctor named Crozier, played by. Patrick Reichardt, who I think throughout the entire thing is mainly just focused on his work to just try and get this right, because if he does manage to succeed in this, then he'll have ultimately found a way to cheat death. Basically, when people's bodies get old or damaged, they can merely transfer their consciousness, their mind, their memories into an entirely new body and thus conquer death, become immortal. But, as I said, while Christopher Ryan, Patrick Reichardt and uh, Nabil Saban are all brilliant in this. The highlight of this particular part of Trial of a Time Lord is King Yakanos. He's one of the uh, bodies whom they tried to suck out. He's King of the Krontep, and he's played by Brian Blessed. Now, for those who may not know, in 1966, uh, when William Hartnell was leaving the role, one of the people that they were considering for the role of the second Doctor that is, before they ultimately decided on Patrick Troughton, was Brian Blessed. And while I don't know if I could necessarily see Brian Blessed as the Doctor, out of his entire career, I've only ever seen one thing with Brian Blessed that I don't really like. And 
even though it's not his fault, and that is the first season of Blackadder. I mean, while I do think Blackadder got better later on, and I do love Blackadder as a whole, the first season, I personally think, is the weakest of all of them. But then again, that's not Blessed's fault. Everything else with Brian Blessed is brilliant. I mean, you got the likes of, uh, of Flash Gordon, uh, Much Ado About Nothing. Hell, even a mayonnaise ad, they stick Brian Blessed in there, and I'm like... Right, I guess I'm going to buy mayonnaise. Just like, just having him in there going, Man alive, what's wrong with big tomatoes? Just like, yes. And here, he brings such energy to it. I mean, any role where you can get Brian Blessed shouting, yeah. I mean, he, he's kind of like this king, this warrior who's trying to do right by his own people. And when he, even when he finds one of his men who has seemingly become some kind of wolf creature, he works with him as hard as he can, and when it's ultimately revealed that this wolf creature has seemingly died, Perry's like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. It's like, oh, no, 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 don't be. I mean, he I mean, he died fighting. He died noble warrior. And we shall avenge him! Just like, Brian Blessed in this is just a ton of fun. And he is the best part of Mind Warp as a whole. I don't know if he... I don't necessarily remember if he comes back in uh, Terror of the Vervoids or The Ultimate Foe. I guess I'll have to see when I can watch that through. I do remember hearing that there is some alternate version of the ending, which I'll, I'll see when I come to it if they mention that later on. But anyway, a little bit of a spoiler alert for the end here. Eventually, Perry is captured and is used and is seemingly given the brain of... Kiv and Gavir Kamos and his men are due to storm the lab when suddenly the doctor is he is about to go and save Perry when suddenly he is called away now he's he's running to save her and then suddenly the TARDIS appears beside him and he seemingly backs inside and as the doctor realises watching through after this trial that's the point when the Time Lords called him to this space station this trial He's like, well, why'd you do that? And I was like, well, well, we had to stop you interfering. I mean, everything would have worked out the same way had you not interfered. He's like, no, 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 you didn't call me here for this trial. You called me here for a very different event. And I'm going to find out what. So, well, I thought the Mysterious Planets ending was a little... Well, well, I felt was a little abrupt. This gets me intrigued for what happens later. What happens in Terror of the Vervoids and the Ultimate Foe? But Mind Warp, I thought, was a massive, was a huge step up from the Mysterious Planet. And as I said, it's a step up. It's got a good cliffhanger, which gets me intrigued for what happened later on. And it's got Brian Blessed in as a character. What more do you want? I mean, he may not have ended up being the second Doctor, but I'm glad they managed to get Brian Blessed into Doctor Who at least once. And you know what? King Yukanos is the best of this. Anyway, that's my quick little thoughts on Mind Warp. Anyway, the next one up should be Terror of the Vervoids, which the next Doctor Who review I'll do will either be Terror of the Vervoids or The Pirate Planet. Well, we'll see which one I end up reviewing next. But until then, see ya. <laughs>